Well, hey, podcast listeners, in episode 51 of the Pixar Post podcast, we're going to chat about Lou, the short in front of Cars 3, some Cars 3 products, the Annie Awards, as well as Piper's win, uh, and we'll premiere a new segment that we're starting called Ask Pixar Post, where you get to get to know us a little bit more by answering some of your questions. Ooh. (laughs) Yeah, in fact, uh, I didn't show you the questions. I know. I like, I kind of like this. Kind of like how I'm going to try to stump you right now with two Pixar trivia questions, how we like to start our podcasts. Are you ready? I love these questions, but it always makes me so nervous. I know you say it every time. (laughs) But remember, I think next time is up to you again to find some questions for me, too. Oh, yeah, I I need to. Yeah, next time. All right, so this one. Metroville, and this one's pretty darn hard. Okay. So Metroville Stadium in The Incredibles is home to what? Meaning, what is the mascot of Violet and Dash's school? Okay. Is it... A lion, the lions, the tigers, the Spartans, the wolverines. Um, The tigers. That is incorrect. Would you like a second guess? Yes. Okay. The uh, Spartans. That is correct. Yes. It's, <laughs> I'm t- I was trying to remember because I watched that movie not too long ago. Yeah, but it's like such an in the background thing. Unless you're really like paying attention to it, you'd never notice. Oh, well, so, I got it right. All right. Second and, try. <laughs> yeah, and this one's this one's pretty easy. Okay. When you tell me they're easy, it's... No, this one's really easy. I okay. should have started with this one just to give you a little bit. Okay. So in Toy Story 3, what was the name of the little girl who owned Lotso, Big Baby, and Chuckles? Don't answer it right away. Do you know off the top of your head? No, I'm, I'm okay. trying to replay it. Is it Anna, Mabel, no. Jennifer? No. Daisy. Daisy. I'm like, I knew that. <laughs> that's, why, that's why I was hoping I wouldn't <laughs> yeah. have to do the the options. So, all right. Not okay. too shabby yeah, there. Not too shabby. The Spartans one was really hard. I'll yeah, give you that. Yeah, I was really thinking. For some reason, the tiger tigers just kind of... I think because I was thinking, you know, we're in Detroit, Tigers. I thought maybe you were going to have a connection to that since football's over and baseball's beginning. You never know, I read right? too much into that question. Right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's okay. Um... All right, so let's talk about some awards and get into some of the big news that we have for the week. What do you say? Yes. All right, so the Annie Awards were this last weekend. And Which we always love watching the Annie Awards. Yes. Yes, so we like to hear all of the fun banter and all the background stuff that goes on mm-hmm. and what usually happens. Uh, it, it usually starts about a half hour late. <laughs> they usually have technical difficulties, yeah. um, but we just love it. Just we love it's, seeing it's, it's fun a and fun quirky. show. Yeah. The only time I think we got a little bit like what is going on here and it was off the rails was when we Chorus said, with, Leachman oh. was presenting Oof, for she like was a half host. the show. Yeah. Yeah. It Whoa. seemed like it was forever. Yeah. Yeah. That was an interesting one. All right. So let's talk about before we get into Piper and the, the win that they got, let's talk about the thoughts that you may have on Dory's loss and getting overlooked now, I guess because there were so many great animated films this year mm-hmm. that I kind of thought maybe this was going to be not a strong possibility, but a possibility. I mean, you have Moana, which is, you know, just like Dory, it's like all water. Mm-hmm. But Moana also has fire elements and smoke elements yeah. with the volcanoes. But, um, I, and Kubo. Right, that was... That was stop the animation. So right. I, I knew that was going to be a very strong contender. So I guess I, I I wasn't surprised. I was glad that they received nominations that they did. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Zootopia, obviously. Yeah, Zootopia was pretty much the one to beat this year. Mm-hmm. So they were... Dory was up for Best Animated Feature, Character Animation for Eric O. Uh, Kubo ended up winning that one. Um, storyboarding. Trevor Jimenez was up, but Zootopia ended up winning. Uh, and then obviously we said Best Animated Feature, which Zootopia ended up winning. But it, I guess it bugged me that there was no character design nomination. Yeah. So I can see it from an overall character standpoint. I said, but no Hank love in my notes, exclamation point, <laughs> dot, 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 but no Hank love. Mm-hmm. And I at least feel vindicated a little bit because at the VES Awards, which were two nights ago, or on February 7th, um, that they did actually get not only nominated, but won right. for the Outstanding Animated Performance for Hank. Mm-hmm. Um, and we talked about that, 
well, we'll get into some of the other stuff with the VES awards and more of the Hank stuff, but well, let's talk about it. So the Hank, so that one, I felt like they really deserved that on the Annie Awards too. I mean, obviously, you know, there's again, like you said, lots of great animated movies. Yeah, there's this so year. many. It was a tough year across the board, but if there's one area, I mean, you're going to talk about we we wrote a whole post about it about like getting geeky with Finding Dory, and we said that uh, Hank had eleven thousand. 41 rigging prims the average character has approximately 20 right uh it took 118 weeks to build and articulate hank uh it took 22 weeks for shading him the average is less than eight weeks for a character but i wonder if that you know um asifa you know asifa hollywood who does the annie awards if they thought okay well finding dory is kind of a continuation of finding nemo half those characters were already developed you know, yes, we have a decent handful of new characters, including Hank, which was an amazing character. Right. Um, but then you have something like Zootopia and Moana. Right. And very, Cuba. very in broad worlds. Yeah. Zootopia had, they had to create like tons of characters. So I wonder if that's the reason. It, it could have played you know, into if, it. You know, that's why, you know, that committee decided, okay, let's, we've got to leave off character design. I mean, granted, last year's. Annie Awards, um, Pixar Animation <laughs> Studios received 25 nominations yeah, this year. Inside Out. Yeah. And, and Good Dinosaur. And Sanjay Super Team. Right. So, I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's not leveling it out. It should be independent each year where it doesn't matter if they got nominated for 25 last year. They should be able to also likewise be nominated for 25 again mm-hmm. if they felt that it was appropriate. Yeah. Um, it did kind of bum me out, but I get it from a character standpoint oh, that I'm to- talking it- about one character. The design of Jenny and Charlie is not that far off from Dory, so they kind of had to... Yeah, and you know what else really bummed me out was the score. Yeah, like, no Thomas Newman no did love. not get a nod for the score. That one really bummed me out. Yeah. Um, you know, I guess it's just the, the darn nominations. <laughs> this year's a tough year. Yeah, so uh, also, so I guess just awards in general, uh, I still, I guess we just need to put it out there because I got to feel better about getting it off my chest. I still am bummed about the Oscars and the Golden Academy Globes. The Academy Awards mm-hmm. and the yeah. Golden Globes, yeah. Yeah, I mean, Golden Globes, that already happened. That already just happened. getting overlooked mm-hmm. completely. Yep. And then Academy Awards coming mm-hmm. up. Yeah, it's coming up. Right, so that's, um, you know, obviously they're, they didn't even get nominated. No, they did not get a nomination. Um, you know, after the Golden Globes, didn't they didn't receive a nomination for the Golden Globes. Now, I do think this is the year that Zootopia is going to basically win everything. Mm-hmm. Um, I was kind of bummed that Dory, you know, didn't get the nomination because it did gross over a billion dollars. I mean, it was a big hit. It did tackle some very big technical aspects. It was, I think, a very well-received film. Well, clearly, yeah. Um, but it did receive the BAFTA nominations, and the BAFTA nominations are like the British versions of right. the Oscars. Yep. Um, so we'll see there. I still think Zootopia is probably going to win. Um, but it's nice to have your team honored with that recognition. They need the nomination. I agree, especially, you know, like we talked about, it worldwide box office was over a billion dollars. Mm-hmm. Zootopia likewise had that. Right. I'm not putting anything down by any other film. But it deserved the nomination, and mm-hmm. it bugs me that it didn't get it. When you've got People's Choice Awards, they cleaned up in the People's Choice Awards, Finding Dory did. Mm-hmm. When you've got the highest grossing domestic United animated States film. animated film, and then you've got over a billion dollars in like the top seven films that have ever done this on the animation side of it, mm-hmm. it seems silly to me that it doesn't get... I mean, it's cl- there's clearly a disconnect between what audiences are saying, because if People's Choice Awards, voted by the people, are saying it, I know it doesn't have to correlate, but it feels different. Mm-hmm. It's it's like an instance where... Um, I don't know. It, it's You vote someone into office, and you expect them to do a certain type of thing, and all of a sudden they don't. You know, it's just there's disconnects. Right. And you're like, wait a minute, what's going on here? Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. It. It's a bummer. Yeah, it's a bummer. And but on a not so bummer note, Piper received the nomination for the Academy Award for animated short film. Correct. Yeah, and which we, can... we are so excited for, and we're also really excited for a 
Pixar pro- or um, a couple of Pixarians. Yes. Um, actually, I should say a decent handful. Uh, I've done a uh, independent project called Borrowed Time, mm-hmm. and they too were nominated for an Oscar for best animated short film. And right. this is kind of mirroring a couple years back when um, Dice and Robert uh, from Pixar left Pixar to uh, start Tonko House. Right. And they were up for the Dam Keeper. Right. In the same category. Right. So I think that's kind of cool. Oh, it's very cool. If you guys haven't seen the video of them when they're watching the Borrowed Time team, when they're watching themselves or videoing themselves watching the nominations live and they find out that they get nominated, how they like jump up and celebrate. I cried. It's just, I yeah. cried. I got tears to my eyes. And I was like, that's such a special moment for them. How exciting. Yeah, it's ridiculous. It's something they worked independently after working all day, working on Dory and all these other numerous films. They're doing this independently for how many, you know, so odd years. Right. And now it's like totally like they're being rewarded. I mean, that's how incredible. Yeah, if anybody doesn't know, it was created within Pixar by Pixar artists as part of their co-op program. So Pixar is not staking any claim to mm-hmm. it. They were thanked yes, uh, at the end of the credits for borrowed time, but they're not, yeah. they're. It's like an independent. It's an independent thing, but it's part of their co-op program to develop people and see who's going to be, you know, next directors and, mm-hmm. and just work on projects and programs like that to kind of just continue to spread the arts and have an openness which is awesome that a company allows that um so they had to find strategic times i think the guys talk about it that they had to find strategic times to use the rendering um the render farm Mm -hmm. when it wasn't being Being used used. for other things they had to do it in small segments i mean it's pretty bold of pixar to allow that to happen and very cool it's i think it's really good i think it's it's not like grooming upcoming talent for directors and stuff like that but it is having people hone their skills it's honing their skills and it's doing the right thing it's allowing people to have not only their work interest but their side interests and a creative outlet within where you work i think yeah and not making it a conflict of interest Mm -hmm. a lot of times people at companies feel like i can't really show what else i'm doing outside of work i don't want them to think i have a conflict of interest or that i'm distracted by this while i am at work you're right because yeah yeah because you don't want to lose your job (laughs) right so i think it's really cool Mm -hmm. um but you obviously mentioned piper in there too so obviously from the annie awards they ended up piper ended up taking home for uh best animated short Mm -hmm. uh so let's go ahead and actually take a second and listen to their acceptance speech Thank you. Wow, this is very surreal. Uh, I just, I'll start by congratulating the other nominees uh, for all of your fantastic work. Um, wanted to, of course, thank everybody at Disney who supports us in our making of, of our films. John, Ed, Jim, for creating an unbelievable environment to work in at Pixar. And we really stand here on behalf of the Piper crew. So here's to the Piper crew. Congratulations, team. And thank you. I'm especially happy for this guy right here, <laughs> Alan Barilero. <laughs> no, I, I, I think I, you know, this was a collaboration. I just want to say that. So I accept this on, uh, on their behalf. But also, um, I really have to thank Andrew Stanton and John Lasser for their mentorship. Um, Lindsay Collins, the producer of Finding Dory, Jim Morris. There's countless others at Pixar that made this happen because uh, it's hard enough to get a film done, never mind being in front of a great film like that. So thank you very much. Um, lastly, I just have to say, to my family back home in Canada and here in California. Love you very much, my wife tonight, kids. Thank you all. All right, so the first voice you heard there, we should have said it when we were going in, was the producer uh, Mark Sondheimer and director Alan Barilero came in at the second portion there. So really couldn't be th- more thrilled. Obviously, we know your love for Piper. I love Piper. I love Piper. A lot of people love Piper. <laughs> and all we can do is just continue to Hold our breath, keep our fingers crossed. I know. Do happy, lucky dances and hope that it works out uh, at the Oscars as well. I'd love to be able to see the team up there uh, accepting that award for sure. And I did like how um, Alan in his uh, acceptance speech, he thanked uh, John and Andrew. And when we had spoke with him before, he had said how their mentorship meant so much. And Mm -hmm. it was nice that he's continued to keep, you know, thinking that, you know, I'm here because... You, you guys pushed me. You mm-hmm. guys, you know, were there to help me with this. And Lindsay and um, yep. 
you know, Jim Morris, he was in the audience and Jim Morris had a busy week because he was presenting at the VES Awards <laughs> a week later. <laughs> right. Um, so he was in uh, Los Angeles for a while. But um, it's just really cool to hear that. And it was kind of, you know, I felt like we had like an inside scoop because we had, <laughs> he had kind of told us about that. So it's like, oh, it was kind of cool. Yeah. So, you know, as far as some of the technical stuff that we had in our interview with him that we did uh, in our, our podcast, which of course that's going to be linked in our show notes. And if you ever need to catch any of our show notes, just go to pixarpost.com, click on the podcast button, and you can see all the different episodes there. Again, this is episode 51. But uh, <clears throat> as we've been noticing, there's been a lot of technical articles regarding Piper and how they took this as a, a tool that, they, that he was developing, that Alan was developing, mm-hmm. and ended up turning it into a short film based right. on that encouragement that you referenced. Well, in an in an article by IndieWire that actually came up uh, today, I actually saw it. It was actually kind of a really cool little side note that was in there that Alan is now working on as an animator on The Incredibles 2. So I thought that was a cool little piece of news to pass along. Right. I'm just going to go ahead and throw it out there now. With his experience and tenure there, he's got to be either supervising or directing animator. I say probably supervising. I think so too. Mm-hmm. I think he's one of the. I think there'll be a couple, but I think he's one of the supervising mm-hmm. animators. At least that's what our initial predictions are. We'll see if we're right or wrong coming up. Right. <laughs> and supervising is above directing. Correct. Animator. Right. Right. So yeah, it's basically the the direct link to the director, mm-hmm. not the directing animator. It's always we talked about that with Michael Makarovich as far yeah. as defining the difference between yeah, directing animator, supervising, supervising animator. animator. Yeah. Always confusing. <laughs> All right, so moving on a little bit, we also got some good news this last week about Lou. Again, that short directed by Dave Mullins, produced by Dana Murray. It's going to be in front of Cars 3 in theaters. So last week you uh, had written an article about that, that it was uh, from the USA Today premiere, their their exclusive launch. Yeah, and it was the first rendered image of Lou. Yeah, which he obviously we He is basically all... like a lost and found monster. <laughs> Like living in and not a, in a bad way, monster. Not, yeah, like a creature, I should say, creature. They, I think they do describe it as monster in the article. Like, yeah, but it's kind of. He's kind they of say creature. monster, but we shouldn't think monsters are like by saying monster, we shouldn't think it's necessarily a bad thing. A, our cat is named Monster. Yeah. B, after Monsters Inc. <laughs> right. B, because of all the monsters in Monsters Inc., we know there's plenty of friendly ones too. We just don't want it to make it sound like he's a monster in a bad way. He's though. like a happy looking creature cloaked in a red hoodie with baseball eyes in button pupils he has a goofy kind of crooked (laughs) grin (laughs) um and he's peeking out of a lost and found box what uh appears to be um it appears to be a west coast high school because the lost and found box looks like it is sitting outside in a lot of west coast schools the doors to this classrooms are outside where you can walk outside rather than if you live in the midwest everything's in a building because it's freezing here right (laughs) (laughs) um and it appears to be lou is looking at like um a quad kind of like a playground Mm -hmm. and there we know that there is a boy who is kind of has like sid like qualities and Mm -hmm. it's gonna have a little bit of an anti-bullying message Right, so JJ is the bully's name. Mm-hmm. I'll take a, I'll take it that they you know pulled a little inspiration from me being TJ. I, yeah, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just make me feel better and go with it. Um, so the quote from the paper from the USA Today article was a real terror. JJ is a real terror, snatching a video game from his classmate and kicking a girl's stuffed animal into the basketball hoop. Uh, and it says that essentially Lou decides it's time for a hijinks filled comeuppance and comeuppance is uh, essentially a punishment that someone deserves um and it says that lou's main sole purpose in life is to give things back Mm -hmm. so obviously a you already touched on it that it's a cool take that it's kind of playing off of schoolyard bullying Mm -hmm. a topic that a matters right um b is something that a lot of people have experienced Mm -hmm. um but the one thing I thought was interesting is there's been a lot of speculation out there, whether it be in comments uh, or on the forum, that talk about how if if Lou is going to somehow convince JJ, is this going to be a situation that's going to be too similar to when Woody confronts Sid? No. And I have a theory about this. I don't think it's going to be like that. I think it's going to be very... 
like JJ is going to see something that's going to because Lou has watched JJ for so long right. and knows his his ticks. He knows mm-hmm. his emotional things. What's going to make him? What does he want? JJ just wants to be accepted. That's all anybody wants in the world. They just want people to accept them as a bully. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that Lou has quietly watched this kid. And knows what to get him. So Lou's going to slink and disappear and, you know, maneuver Mm -hmm. and drop maybe something around a football, a skateboard, something that's going to be like, okay, hey, maybe you want to play with me instead of me taking your stuff. I think it's going to be like that. So you don't think there's going to be any interaction that JJ will ever know that Lou exists? No. I don't either. The other thing I was wondering is... If, if it's saying that Lou's sole purpose in life is to give things back, I didn't know if it also was something where, although J.J. is knocking something out of somebody's hands, kicking things and taking them, does Lou somehow or another figure out a way to all of a sudden, when somebody's not looking, pop something back in front of a kid well, I think that we- maybe got it taken from them when like J.J. is around? So maybe it seems like... JJ might even be giving it back and like somehow Lou is secretly giving him credit for giving those things back possibly but I also think maybe you know like the little girl stuffed animal gets uh, up on a basketball hoop everyone has to go inside for you know back in for recess JJ gets it and the bear's sitting outside the door something like that I think it's more like that he's giving things back without being seen well, yeah, I definitely don't think he's going to be seen. Mm-hmm. I just didn't know if he was like secretly giving JJ the it, credit. It could, I like that, though. I like that idea, too. Like, so then so then the people that he was bullying think, wait a minute, maybe he's not so bad. Maybe he JJ's giving this back to me and he's apologizing. So then people start warming up to JJ. Mm-hmm. And that's when JJ starts to realize that because the final quote is like something to that... Uh, He gets JJ to understand that true happiness comes from giving. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. It's just what came. It's just what came to my mind. But I like your I I like your idea too. As far as that, it just kind of like it's more happenstance. Like it comes across and yeah. JJ is shown these things which remind him of being kinder and these. So we'll see. Yeah, Uh, I'm excited for this short. Yeah, you also spotted that. Dave Mullins was going out to the to yeah. Disney World. Yeah, so Dave Mullins tweeted that he goes, um, I'm taking my family on the road. I'm taking Lou and my family on the road. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, hmm. And then a few hours later, he tweeted again, I'm at Disney World. And I'm like, okay, well, I know the social media mom celebration slash conference is going on this week as well. So I'm like, okay, does that mean he's going to show Lou to the social the Disney social media moms conference which I know they've already pre-screened um the born in China okay the yep. new Disney nature film yep. and I know they've uh, done other things in the past so I-, I don't know right now all the Disney social media moms are on the Disney wonder on a cruise so I don't know maybe it could be there mm-hmm. um but I have a feeling that would be a good audience with that message oh, that for sure. it might be uh, premiered out there. Could. Or, or. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking at the Epcot um, Disney slash Pixar Film Fest that's at Epcot. Um, could be that too. When's that? That's just happening. It's like just the, their short films that they... Got it. I yeah. don't think it'll premiere there. I don't think so either. I thought it was... I, I just have a feeling it was going to be with this... The Disney it could. Social media. But it, now they're on The Wonder, so I don't, I don't know if it's going to be on the cruise. Yeah, there was a good um, question um, from Reptile Patrol in the forum as well about that, that they said, I don't know the history. Has it ever premiered at some type of special event like that? And so what I did is I went back and looked at them, and it's always been like either Annecy, Berlin, or the Hiroshima Film Festival, something like that that Mm -hmm. it ties to. But that's only really within the last couple of years, starting with La Luna. Before Mm -hmm. that, they premiered with the film in theaters mm-hmm. and then obviously early on was SIGGRAPH and such, but this would be different if it was one that premiered with that panel, mm-hmm. but it's a t- very targeted audience for yeah, sure. Yeah, that's, that's cause I thought with the, you know, with it being like the mom blogs and stuff. I well, yeah, just, they obviously and have. And there's a ton of, a ton of attendees. Right. You know, Disney invites 
you know, everyone else. It could just be also just a profile of it to say, here's more about it. And Mm -hmm. it's going to be about bullying. So pay attention. It might not be premiering it, but it might just be sharing the information. We'll have to see. Right. Yeah. So we'll keep an eye on it. But obviously we mentioned that that Lou was going to be tied alongside Cars 3 uh, hitting theaters on June 16th of this year, 2017. But we also want to talk about there's the products are starting to show up. Yes. So if we're going to talk, it's not really spoilery, but we're going to talk a theory which could be spoilery. Mm -hmm. So if you don't want to hear it, skip ahead like four or five minutes. Yeah. (laughs) Um, But there are some books that are popping up on Amazon. And one of the things that we noticed is that we've always seen this artwork that's that's showing like Jackson Storm, Lightning McQueen, Lightning McQueen with Cruz Ramirez, Cruz Ramirez by herself, so on and so forth. Well, these book covers that are now coming out show Cruz Ramirez as the Dynaco, like racer. In, in, in Dynaco gear, yeah, like as if she's sponsored by Dynaco, mm-hmm. right? Um, so in that, the lead. Right, in the lead. So it just, you have to think, it's way too close looking of a character to not be Cruz Ramirez. They wouldn't do that. It would be confusing to have two characters that look so alike. So the only thing that I can can envision is that she trains Lightning McQueen and Lightning McQueen eventually comes to the realization that she's darn good and she doesn't need to just be a trainer working at the Radiator Springs Racing Institute. She needs to. She needs to actually be in the race. Mm Mm-hmm. And I think all the training that's going to happen. And again, total speculation. We have zero we have idea. Zero idea. This is theory. I think the bottom line is, is that McQueen's going to be, he's saying, I'm not done until I know it's over. And I think he once he sees that he can then flip help her, I think he's going to say he's done and he's not even going to win his final race. But yes. she might. I think she and will. That's, and that's going to make him feel like he's perfect like this is great i feel like i can now do something new Mm -hmm. so i think that that's an interesting thing to see Mm -hmm. Um, we've been talking about this for a while now since we've seen those books but i i feel like it's i feel like it's right feels right it sure does but you never know yeah you never know right but you never know when these book covers come out we've been misled many times before yeah that's true um, so the other thing we want to talk about, the Art of Cars 3 book cover. So Chronicle sent it over to us, uh, and we're obviously thrilled to share it in high resolution. So if you haven't seen it in a, in a better high-quality image, check it out on our site. Um, the other ones that are on Amazon, Barnes Noble, are all still pretty low-res at this point, and the color is, for some reason, way off. Oh, I haven't seen the yeah, so, oh, yeah. Yeah, so it's kind of cool to that you know we have the good a good version of it. But there's another thing that's noticed that uh, Twitter, our, one of our Twitter followers, Michael H., noted that the covers of Cars 3 and the first Cars kind of are sort of similar. Mm -hmm. Whereas like in the first one, Lightning McQueen and Mater are very slowly strolling towards, towards like as if the the book is like the the cover of the book is towards the camera. Right. And then the background, there's clouds. It's uh, lots of tans and blues. And it's a similar thing on the beach scene with Lightning and Cruise. The only difference is, is that they're, you can tell they're going faster And they're on a beach rather than in Radiator Springs. But it is interesting that it's just the two characters, two characters. So I was like immediately thinking, does that mean it's going to mirror like a friendship that's really going to blossom between Cruz and Lightning? Possibly. I think it will. Hmm. But I thought it was a cool like little observation. Yeah, it was a good observation. Yeah. Um, So obviously we're excited for that book. The pre-order is out there now. Um, yeah, these Chronicle Art of books, if you haven't started buying them, oh my goodness, they're well, yeah, amazing. They're essential, and it almost feels as if, like, if you get if you go see the movie, if you get the Blu-ray, you got to have the book. Yeah, the book is the... And especially once you get two or three of them, because they're all the same form factor, starting from Monsters Incorporated is when it started. Mm-hmm. They're the same form factor. They look great on a shelf. They look great off a shelf when you're leafing through the pages. The quality's good. Um we can't recommend them enough. Yeah, they're awesome. Yeah. Uh, so there's some other merch that's showing up out there too. So again, nothing major spoilerly, spoiler, spoiler-ish. I'll just <laughs> go with that instead. Um, on the Disney store, they have uh, a beach towel that has Cruz, Jackson, and Lightning on it. Cruz does not have the Dynaco 
emblems or anything right. on it. Mm-hmm. It's just the regular cruise. There's a pair of sunglasses that Which are like... Which are amazing. They're aviators. Yeah, I just saw them yesterday and I meant to tell you about it. Sorry, we're going to have a quick little conversation <laughs> here. They're $5.99 mm-hmm. and Disney right now has a friends and family discount. <laughs> For twenty five percent, very excited. About I know. That. I don't remember the code, but it's on DisneyStore.com. <laughs> so if you're listening to this within the next couple of days, I think it goes through the weekend. Okay. Five ninety nine. They're so. We'll cute. link it in the show notes. How yes. about that? Okay, but they're so, so cute. Yeah, they're aviator glasses, and in one corner it's Cruise Ramirez, and the other corner it's, it's two it's characters. Lightning. Oh, I thought it was another one too. Oh, I thought it was just single, single. Oh, maybe it was just like the reflection. I just saw it and I was like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah, so then there's really uh, there's uh, some swim trunks. There's a t sh- like a rash guard swim sh- type shirt. Um, so definitely, if you haven't checked those out, uh, also at the London Toy Fair, kind of cool. Not a whole lot to report, but they had a display showing that the um, Lego Junior. So it's like ages like five to seven, I four think. four to seven, five to seven, yeah, somewhere in there. That there's going to be a line. They had the boxes there, but the boxes where you would see the character artwork was just white. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't like they put something over it. They printed the box that way, just white. But it shows the car's logo. And it shows you that there's going to be like, I think like six or seven or seven or eight sets. Oh, wow. So kind of cool. Unless they had multiple boxes, which is always a possibility, just like repeat. But uh, yeah, that was there. So there's going to be more coming from that. So stay tuned there. And then obviously from a couple weeks back, um, I just wanted to at least touch on it real quick because I'm pretty excited about it, that the video game, the Cars 3 video game is going to be in production. Oh, Warner yeah. Brothers, their uh, game division bought Avalanche Software, which Avalanche is the people, are the people that made Disney Infinity, that game. So I'm pretty excited that they're bringing a lot of the same team Back. over there. Mm-hmm. So John Blackburn still going to be the VP of operations and all these other elements of it. And they got the same octane engine, which is like their software that they created that delivers the movement and everything of the Mm -hmm. characters. That's still going to be over there. They had to license that Warner brothers had to license it separately. So really kind of cool. Um, but I'm excited that they're going to be having a hand in it. So we know it'll be at least at a minimum, the same quality, if not better, if they've made improvements to it as Disney infinity had. So stay tuned for more on that as well. Cool. Very cool. Anything else, Cars 3, that you can think of? Um, Oh, uh, did we ever talk about that we went to the um, Detroit Auto Show? We kind well, we did a... um, We did uh, a separate post and then the Hangout about it. A Google Hangout. Yeah, so if you haven't, uh, be sure to check it out um, on our site. When when they brought Lightning McQueen, the full-size Lightning McQueen, to the Detroit Auto Show, we were able to attend that event live. Yeah, the full-scale Lightning McQueen in the Cars 3 get-up. Yeah. Exactly. That was pretty cool. It was very cool. Absolutely. Um, so a couple like die cast updates. So Mater and the Easter Buggy. The only reason I want to talk about it is because these die cast have been rumored forever. We did a post on it. We got a full video review, so I'm not going to go in depth. But I just, I'm super excited. You really are. That they've been, for years, they've been talking about these. They're out. We saw them in the store. And for anybody. You grabbed them off the shelf so quickly, I thought. The whole, all the pegs were going to fall off. <laughs> <laughs> and then I grabbed them because they were right when you walked into Toys R Us. Mm-hmm. I grabbed them and moved to a different area. So if somebody walked up, they wouldn't see what I was looking at. Yeah. Because <laughs> I don't want somebody looking when I'm like looking at both the cars. Because one of the Lightning McQueens, his headlights were a little too low. Yeah, because he TJ checks to make sure the paint is right on the ones that he buys. Yeah, all the decals and all the paint has to be mm-hmm. as good as possible. I get it. I get it. If I'm going to buy one, I want to buy the best one. Yeah, I get it. Um. So, yeah. So, anyways, I'm glad that they came That's out. Why I support you in this yeah, habit. Yes. <laughs> well, come on. If you see car- what what happened over Christmas. Yeah. When I. So, we went down the aisle in Target and there was clearly a, two cases that had just been put out. Uh, some of the double packs and the singles. I grabbed them all, put them in the cart and basically <laughs> ran <laughs> down a different aisle so I could see them. Yeah. So, you're guilty too. I know. <laughs> um. But what's silly is that if you do go to your Toys R Us right now, and I don't know if it's changed, but even as of the other day, somebody reported to us that the stores are saying that they're embargoed until April 30th, which is silly because Easter is April 16th and it's an Easter themed car. Right. So something's obviously wrong in their system, um, but definitely go pick them up if you haven't. If you haven't seen our review video, check it out as well. We even show where there's an Eve from Wally Easter egg on the Easter buggy car in the book. Which I, was, which I was hoping would translate over to the diecast, but it would be that would be wishful thinking. Yeah. So I was excited to see it. 
And then somebody else also wrote us a comment saying that they saw the Mike and Sully cars versions in the book somewhere. And I'm driving myself bonkers. You looked, I looked, we can't find it. So I replied to them. Hopefully they'll reply back with some more information. Mm. So, um, okay. So let's talk a little bit of um, Finding Dory. So there's uh, just a real quick update just because we thought it was kind of cool. So Disneyland Paris has a new float. Oh, yes. That's going to be called Discover a New World, which is part of the Disney Stars on Parade. Mm -hmm. Um, Again, at Disneyland Paris. And the float uh, was posted on DLP today, so DisneylandParisToday.com, which shows the design. And it's actually really cool. It shows it all the way from the initial sketch concept art through the CG renderings to maquettes maquettes. to the final close-up photos of this thing. And we haven't seen all the characters because they haven't shown every single angle at least we don't think but from what we've seen it includes jenny charlie bloat squirt dory sheldon pearl nemo yes okay (laughs) there you go um so definitely check it out we'll have the link in the show notes as well just a really cool and fun thing it's always nice i think it's rumored to to be march oh that it's gonna actually it's confirmed that sometime in march is when hit the streets yeah hit the streets of disneyland (laughs) paris end of march so if you can't get out there be sure to stay tuned because of course as it premieres we'll have somebody will have video Mm -hmm. footage of it we'll be sure to share that out because we want to check it out for ourselves too all right so now we're going to get to a new segment so this segment is actually called ask pixar post and the purpose of it is we want to get everybody that's listening to this to get to know us a little bit more maybe just ask quirky questions whatever it may be so it can be we do get a lot of emails and questions like what's your favorite this or what do you guys think about this right so i mean you never really know um which ones we're going to answer which ones we want to answer we're not going to answer all of them obviously if it's something completely nutty we're not going to go down (laughs) that road but there's fun stuff so what we did is we reached out to uh don s who's uh, been a great listener of our podcast. He caught up uh, not too long ago, actually, and he totally like binge listened and got all the way through. <laughs> so I reached out to him and I'm like, hey, listen, you've been communicating with us and being so great sharing some of your uh, art. And he actually joined the forum and posted some of it on there. And so we're going to be doing this new segment. Do you have any questions that you'd want to ask us? And so he ended up coming up with a couple of them. So we'll give you an idea of what the questions are. And then from there, you can reach out to us at info at pixarpost.com. Just send us an email right there uh, with any questions that you have. And if we answer uh, your question, we'll be sure to give you a little shout out on the podcast as well. So I'll give you an example of what were like some of the fun ones. And then I'm actually going to have a separate thing that I'm just going to talk about that I saw a news update for regarding Disney, which I think you'll like too. So the first question that Don mentioned was, Riley, as a child, hated broccoli. What vegetable did or do you most dislike? So um, he says for himself, Brussels sprouts are his least favorite. He says nasty. And then also, what's your favorite? He's guessing potatoes. Who doesn't love French fries, potato chips, tater tots, mashed potatoes, and gravy? (laughs) He's got the whole kit and caboodle there. So would you like me to go first and say what my dislike is? Or do you want to go first? You already have it queued up in your mind. You go first. I'll do a second. My number one dislike, easy for me cauliflower i hate the way it looks you're crazy <laughs> what why no oh, I, I mine you'll agree with mine yours is crazy cauliflower is delicious delicious i it like doesn't it doesn't have any flavor i like it that's why i don't like it. it doesn't have any flavor and i hate the way it looks oh so um okay so uh, as far as he says brussels sprouts i argue that so I said, we recently had, like, I was thinking about it. I was like, we recently had some dinner with some Pixar employees. And in, in, while we were eating, the, the meal that I received had some Brussels sprouts on it. And I literally was cutting them going, these are so good. If you prepare them right, they can be delicious, Don. Oh, interesting. I didn't even know what you ate that night because I was sitting <laughs> on the other end. <laughs> I know. Um, but yes, so my f- number one dislike uh, would by far be cauliflower. What's your dislike? And then we'll do our likes. Hmm. Um, now, I will say I didn't like uh, potatoes until I was about 15. Yeah, just because you were stubborn. Yeah. <laughs> like the pickiest eater I was. Um, <laughs> mine is mushrooms. Nope. Okay. Nope. All right. Never. Fair enough. They're, mushrooms. Nope. I'm not eating fungus. They're a fungus. They're slimy. They have yeah. a weird texture. Yeah. I don't know what about it. My, I just can't get behind mushrooms. Right. That's like my one. I can pretty much do any, everything else, but mushrooms. 
No, thank you. I like it. I agree. Yeah. I'm not saying I like it like I like mushrooms. I like your answer yeah. because you're Brussels probably... sprouts. Gosh, I haven't tried Brussels sprout in years, so I couldn't say that. Okay. I, I think they were okay. Got it. But... <laughs> All right. Well, also, in addition to us answering them, we'd love to hear your responses too. So in the post regarding this, just go ahead and leave a comment on it as well with what you like and dislike and anybody reading those comments will be like what the heck is this <laughs> if they haven't listened to the show all the way to the end but they'll know once they get there all right so how about likes how about for you vegetables i like yeah um corn on the cob <laughs> okay <laughs> uh gosh i'm not a big vegetable person yeah that's a problem garlic and onions <laughs> all right good enough um, so I said, what do you think my number one is? Peas. Like mm. s- like snow peas Mm-mm. or green pepper. Mm-mm. Oh, man. What is it? What's up, Doc? Oh, carrots. Yeah. Carrots and celery, I forgot. Carrots. I said then green beans, then celery. Yeah. But I do love some peas, too. And water chestnuts. Yeah, I guess that's kind of, it's a vegetable. Like, is it a vegetable? Is it? I don't know. Or is it a nut? I don't know. <laughs> is it a nut? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I guess. Who knows? But there's. I, if there, you know, let us. I guess I could just Google we'll it. We'll Google it. But yeah, it's just it's just water basically, and it has really no flavor. So yeah. I like I like them to be added into things. But yeah, I'm never gonna take a spoonful of water chestnuts. <laughs> <laughs> um. So then he gets uh, into, um, and of course, I wanted to get some of the more in depth ones. He wrote he wrote some really great ones, but I wanted to get some more of the the different ones that we we've touched on this one before, but I didn't want to do just like to start out with what's your favorite Pixar movie or anything like that. I want mm-hmm. to get to some of the different ones. So what do you do for a living that affords you the time and opportunity to host uh, the Pixar post website as well as podcast? If I'm remembering correctly, Julie was something in accounting. I was right. So, uh, gosh, uh, I was a, basically in accounting uh, with a real estate company. Well, what do you do now? That's I, what I'm getting. At. Oh, right now. Yeah. Um, what do we do to afford like the, uh, well, right the now, opportunity to host? Now I um, I love my job. I am a stay at home mom, and I have been a stay at home mom now for almost three years. Our little boy is almost three, and it is the most incredible thing ever. Mm-hmm. When we were uh, pregnant, I thought for sure I was going to go back to work. Um, I grew up in daycare so I thought that's how our son was going to grow up and I didn't mind it but as soon as I had our son I could not leave him and uh, we have made changes and it has allowed me to stay home and be with our son. So how do you have the time to work on posts? Oh gosh it's hard. (laughs) It is. Especially with a little boy who wants to just jump off things and wants to sit in color with me and it's hard you feel guilt um i try to work around nap times or uh you know it's it's hard when news breaks at like 9 Mm a.m and 9 a.m is usually when we're doing like a painting activity Mm -hmm. and i have to be like okay well you know let's do this now and you know i have you know to do a post and that takes me like 45 minutes to an hour to get everything together because i have a little toddler that's like mommy mommy Right. It's hard. Yeah. So you're frantically doing those while I'm at work. So the day work and you can't. (laughs) So the daytime posts are like, you know, you're running with it. Yeah. And then so I uh, when I had because we had talked about this a long time ago. So you were still working. So that's what making me think like Don says something with accounting. I was doing HR consulting at the time. Mm -hmm. But now I work in marketing advertising. Uh, Wanted to get to something that was more exciting. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I'm a supervisor at a company. Um at a marketing advertising firm. And uh, so what affords me the time and opportunity? Uh, it's really, it, it's as soon as we get home. So I work the standard business hours. I come home, we eat dinner, we play with our son, we get him to go to bed. He does not like to go to bed early. So that usually means we're working on posts super late. After 1030. Right. Um, for instance, right now we're recording this and it's 1130. It's actually, it's actually early. It's 1130 on the nose. Yeah. Um, so there's not a lot of time that we necessarily have, but what makes us do it? We love it. We have a ton of fun with it. Mm -hmm. It's definitely, we've said it before on here, I think, but it's made us closer as far as to have something that we're working on together. Mm -hmm. It's frantic at times. It's hard at times, but we love it. That's true. That's true. Cause 
yeah, it's, we just love it so much. We're passionate about it, but it's like you want to work harder on it, but sometimes life doesn't always allow you to work harder on it. Yeah. Well, let's we put try. It, let's put it this way. As much as we say we don't really have the time to do it, the reason we make the time for it and we're not complaining by any means Mm-mm. is because of the passion we have for it. We love it. We love being able to be a source that brings this news to people and some entertainment and some fun. And it's really honest, honest to goodness. It's the feedback that we get. Yes. It's the emails from Don. It's the emails from other people. It's the friendships it's that the we've friendships made. That we've, we've, made. We've talked about this, like the friendships of a know. ton. It's crazy. And that's what makes us continue to do it. It's not that we have the time. It's not that we have the opportunity necessarily. It's not convenient, but that doesn't matter we because we it. love it mm-hmm. because we absolutely love it. All right, so the next question that Don had asked is, so you wake up tomorrow and you're shocked to learn that you've become your favorite Pixar character overnight. Who are you? And what's the first thing you uh, the first thing you go do? I can see Julie as Merida riding a big draft horse at full gallop down the street <laughs> and shooting arrows into passing, I don't know, mailboxes. And you, meaning me, uh, racing alongside, alongside as Lightning McQueen, ka Each time she hits the target... Uh, I say Kachow every time she hits a target and maybe your son is Jack Jack too. So I would say in my mind, I wouldn't be Lightning McQueen as much as I love Lightning McQueen. Okay. I would be Buzz Lightyear. So I envision myself with the one eyebrow up looking around overly confident at times, but smack down to reality. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I would, if I was Buzz Lightyear, I would absolutely throw on my... Uh, I'd have my jet pack. I'd open those wings and I would fall with style. I like it. <laughs> I like it. All right. Okay. I, uh, I too would not be Merida. Even oh. though that pains me to say. Okay. Now this literally surprises me too. I thought for sure you were going to say that. I know because I love Merida. She's one of my all time favorite characters. Brave is one of my all time favorite movies. Um, but I would have to go with my favorite animal. An obsession oh, that I've had since it. I was a wee a wee lass <laughs> would be Bruce. I would be Bruce. Growing. Oh, now as you were even saying that, I thought you were going to say Rex, just because you oh, like. I, yeah, I'm obsessed with sh- great white sharks and dinosaurs. Right. Um, but yeah, no, I would be Bruce, the great white shark from Finding Nemo. Uh, growing up on the East Coast, I lived on the ocean. I became obsessed with sharks. There you go. Especially great white ones, and that's what I would do, and I would wander around scare people and i would love it i wouldn't bite people but i would scare them (laughs) you're crazy i know because i love scaring people well that's true pop out of the water hey (laughs) that's what i would do (laughs) hello you didn't do that yeah i don't do impressions well (laughs) all right go ahead give it a bruce hello (laughs) oh come on you got to do it now no i can't now (laughs) all right fine all right so um i was actually thinking about this so as something that I just wanted to throw in. So I had saw a news article that Victoria and Alberts scores a triple A five diamond rating again. Yes. So I thought as far as getting to know us, I would tell, I don't, have we ever talked about this on here that our Victoria and Alberts experience? I don't think so. All right. We'll give the abridged version. Okay. But we made total fools of ourselves there. Yes. We luckily for our honeymoon, no surprise, went to Disney. Mm-hmm. Um, September of 2005. There you go. Um, but when we were there, we are not hoity-toity eaters. You yeah. mentioned, you know, corn well, on the cob. B- back in 2005, if you booked the platinum plan, it included... The dining plan. Yeah, the dining. Well, it was in- it included other things. Oh, but, got it. Um, it was dining. That's when the dining plan had your tips included. But the platinum plan allowed you to eat at Victoria and Albert's. Does right. not, the platinum plan doesn't exist anymore. But... Um, so we were like, awesome. It's like a $400 dinner that we were eating that night. So we're like, let's do it. We're on our honeymoon. Cool. Um, flash forward to TJ and I are not adventurous eaters. Right. Uh, I mean, I like really spicy foods, but when it comes to like quail, squab, anything that Top Chef you see on show Top Chef, we're not into. <laughs> no. We like chicken very, breasts and very like basic, tacos. Very basic. Yeah. To, oh, don't even give me tacos. Yes. Yeah. Tacos, lasagna. Yeah. Yes. That kind of not- stuff really out there things that kind of fancy food and so like for instance i'll start with the first thing that they brought out 
was the salad. Did they start with the salad? There was something else in first. It was uh, tomatoes. Like we like, got to pick and we pick like the heirloom tomato salad. Right. So then it's just a bunch of cut up tomatoes. Right. So roasted then, in olive oil, different types of olive oil. But they did have like a, a an actual like greens salad, like a mixed green spring yeah. salad. And they and they're like, "What kind of dressing would you like?" And you're like, "Do I you have ranch?" I didn't say that. You said that. <laughs> Oh, it was me? Yeah. I thought it was you. No, it was you. Okay, so do you have ranch? And uh, the guy's like... Because uh, mine came... I had one that had that came dressed already. Right. And yeah, it was all funky stuff. And yeah. I was just like, do you have something basic? <laughs> um, so then they bring us out this... Qu- a quail. A quail leg. Mm-hmm. It was like one little teeny like wing, like a chicken wing size. And it was blue. And it had a, it was like, yeah, it was like blue. <laughs> and we're like, and the guy we looks. We just have another salad. The guy looks at us and he's like, you guys don't want to eat this, do you? And it was we're like, like 10 courses. Yeah. And we're like, no. So then we asked, we say, can we just have another course of the salad? <laughs> so he brings us out a second salad. We basically ate $400 worth of spinach and romaine. Yeah, it was, we embarrassed ourselves big time. Um, oh, it, I wasn't embarrassed. I was having a ball. Well, I mean, just as far as being idiots, but um, yeah, we're just not adventurous eaters. It's to our own fault, but we did eat the desserts very happily. The desserts are very good. I had a creme brulee. I had and some chocolate mousse pyramid it was with a gold pyra- flakes on it. It was a, yeah. That's yeah, good. Yeah. So I think that was probably the dessert was probably the part I remember the most as far that the dining on it. But, but there, there was a, the amuse bouche with oh, the, like the, the sherbets in the between. Mm-hmm. I was all about that. Yeah, those were good. That was good too. But yeah, we're definitely not the hoity toity. And I can't even say hoity toity, just like fancy. Like it just doesn't. It was chef's table. Yeah. So they're like, oh, and he did ask us, did we want to meet the chef? Because we were there for our honeymoon. And we were like, like, no, "No." we feel bad. He's (laughs) he's making a great meal. We're just not his client. We're not his clientele. Yeah, yeah. It was downstairs and get a pizza. Now I will also say though, just because I don't want to definitely say anything bad. I mean, clearly they're great. A triple A five diamond rating again. Oh, Um, the rest of the staff and everything. Yes, it's. Flawless. Every time I, if I wanted to go to the bathroom, I'd start getting out and we'd have someone come over and move my chair. It yeah. was like she was just waiting for they us. They knew. Yeah. And then she'd help me back into my chair. Was, yeah. They had the little like brush with like dust pan to like, if you got a crumb on the table, like come right scoop away. It right off. Yeah. I mean, overall, like the waiter was they great. They gave us flowers. That's right. And, and the menu. Our, a, a menu. The menu like, was like printed on a piece of chocolate. Yeah, we got a menu printed on chocolate, and then we got a box of chocolates to take with us yeah. to eat later, and then they gave us a printed actual menu keepsake. Right. Yeah, it was it was pretty darn cool. It was a really cool experience. It was really fun, but it would be interesting to go back now, now that I'm a slightly more adventurous eater than you. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, back we then. We still didn't. We still wouldn't be good in this area though, because we are not drinkers at all. Yeah. No, we don't drink. We don't so. drink any alcohol, and literally like. Every course came with a different bottle and they of wine. Would, they'd be like, "Hey, what do you feel about pairing it with this?" And we're like, I, yeah. "Do you have Do you have? Can sprite? we just have our sprite?" <laughs> we're, we're That's really, when I was drinking soda, but we now we'd be like, "Can I have water? Maybe a juice?" Like, yeah, we're like the worst clients for that, but we still had a great time and it was a fun experience. But definitely, if you do go, get ready because it's a long experience too, which it should be if you're spending that much. It was money. like three or four hours yeah, that was, we were there. Not it was, four hours. It was like three though. It was, <laughs> it was long. It was, it was fun. Long, it was a long time. Yeah. But it was fun as heck. Yeah. So anyways, <laughs> that's just something I wanted to throw in for my personal get to know us. So if you guys have any questions, again, we'd love to entertain any of your questions, whether it be about Pixar or something adjacent to Pixar, but certainly within the realm. Um, send us an email, info at PixarPost.com. We'll give you oh, a shout out. I have out. a funny one real quick. Okay. I like it. I uh, I dislocated my knee at Disney World when Epcot used to do parades okay. around the uh, World Showcase. And I even tweeted about it, and it was on Late Night with Jimmy Fallon. All right, I'm going to pause it right now. We're going to get the audio. Hang on. So yesterday I went on Twitter, and I started a hashtag called Worst Spring Break. And I asked you guys at home to tweet out a weird or crazy or embarrassing story from your worst spring break. We got thousands of tweets. I was watching them come in all night. It was really fun. Now I thought I'd share some of my favorite worst spring break tweets from you guys. Here we go. This one's from at Julie Papa Giorgio. She says, 
Dislocated knee at Disney World during parade. The parade stops and Goofy carried me backstage to a medic. <laughs> well, you have a torn meniscus. <laughs> what a bummer. All right, so how cool was that? So you said, you, you know, you had your one of your memories. Yeah, you, know, it was you had spring this. break back in the '90s, and uh, <laughs> we were j- fans of Jimmy Fallon before he got the Late Show. He did the Late Late Show or the Late Night Show, yeah. and um, yeah, I was like, okay, I'll tweet that. <laughs> but yeah, yeah really you, did happen. It was it it. it was not a good experience. <laughs> you only created your Twitter account to tweet that. I only created my my personal Twitter account to tweet yeah. at Jimmy Fallon. Because you had done it, you created it the night before, and I remember being like, you created your Twitter account yesterday and you got on the show? I know. <laughs> so what was cool about it, also just a fun little thing after that, so we were re- like really anticipating watching that episode, and we didn't. we weren't able to watch it that night. Right. So the next day... I knew I had already, I had gotten home early. You were doing something I late. I had a work function that I had to go to. Right. And so you're like, did you watch it? I said, no. And so I had already seen it though. I said, no. Actually, I did say I saw it, but you weren't, yours wasn't on and you were all bummed. So I just kind of said, when you came in, I'm like, oh, there's one that's really funny. You should, you really need to do watch it. You need to watch it though, for sure. And so I had had like a camera secretly yeah, recording secret in the camera. room. To get my um, reaction. Yeah. And I freaked so, out. So, yeah. So, then I play it. And I'm like, you're going to love this one. And, I'm, and, and it was hers. She flipped out. She's it jumping did. up and down. And uh, it was really it was really cool. You have a torn meniscus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I thought that was... Yeah, I, I did. It was it was in Germany. I got taken backstage at Germany. And I dislocated <laughs> my knee right in front of a shop in Germany at the World Showcase. There you go. And they took me backstage and I saw... Uh, it was Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, and one of the dwarfs had its um, head off. Head off, and I was with uh, a family member who was very young at the time, and they quickly put it back on. And then I, uh, the characters, a couple characters were with me, and they basically put me in, uh, in an unmarked van and drove me away. <laughs> 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 Meanwhile, you're like, where'd Julie go? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so there you go. Some crazy stories for us. We've got plenty more to tell, and we'd love for to, to tell some of them to you. So you ask us some questions. We'll throw in some of our own fun Disney and Pixar adjacent uh, or just other stuff Silly like that. Stories Silly that stories have. along the way. And uh, we'd love to get to know more about you guys along the way, too, which we certainly will. So thanks again, Don, for helping us kick off this new segment. So I think that about wraps up the show. What do you think? Mm-hmm. All right. So we definitely got, oh, geez, like a full hour in here. We didn't even have an interview or yeah. anything this time. We just got two babbling. So... Uh, all right. Well, that uh, wraps it up. Be sure to follow us on all of our social media channels. Ch- oh, I blew it. <laughs> Be sure to follow us on all of our social media channels, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Pinterest, or subscribe to our podcast on iTunes, Overcast, or Stitcher. I love it. I'm glad I don't do that part. I try to, I try to do it. You want to try it? No. You try to do it quicker each time. <laughs> I do. And lastly, if you like today's show, let us know. Rate us on iTunes, which is extremely important. Leave a comment on our site or send us an email, info at pixarpost.com. We'd love to hear from you. So signing off as usual, I'm TJ. And I'm Julie. And be sure to stay tuned to pixarpost.com all week for the latest Pixar news. Bye-bye.